Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and somebody asked for me to take out the pancake or the flapjack, as it's sometimes called, or even the waffle. Uh, this thing is the XF5U, and it used to be like the best tier 8 heavy fighter in the game. It had a lot more maneuverability, it was all around just a better platform, but they really did nerf the altitude performance and some of the maneuverability characteristics, as well as the climb rate. Now it's. I'm going to say fairly, it's a fairly built aircraft, like uh, 6,000 feet and maybe some change for altitude performance, but what an odd looking aircraft. I know when I first started playing this game and I saw that this was in the tech tree back when it was in closed beta, I'm like, man, I, I really want to get this plane just because it's so weird looking. And I had to look it up, of course, because it is an odd looking aircraft and i wondered if it actually flew and it turns out that there was actually a test version of this developed and this was actually meant to be a short takeoff and landing aircraft because the body of the aircraft is actually going to be the lifting body of the aircraft and those huge propellers were able to bite a lot of air. So this thing would actually sit at about a 45 degree angle on the flight deck, much like you you will see in the hangar. Oh, I see you, let's protect our bomber. So it was able to take off off a of carrier decks in a much shorter distance, which worked. It was uh, a solid concept. Oh, we're gonna need to burn our boost to get up here. And in a lot of ways, this kind of set the uh, tone for short takeoff and landing aircraft. And uh, some people argue with me, but a lot of the same concepts here were used as inspiration for the VF-22 Osprey. Of course, that's a tilt rotor design, but you'll see that this aircraft actually has pitchable blades when it's sitting in the hangar. And they are absolutely massive. So... Man, we did not pick up the airfield, did we? Let's take a look here. There is a human right there in a TA-152. We're going to try and work our way over to the uh, mining plant, or to the military facility as well. Let's see here. The guns on this are a set of 20 millimeter cannons that have a very high rate of fire, but they also overheat very quickly. And if you can get them on target and behaving properly, they can really surprise you. Now, while this thing was nerfed, it still is fairly nimble. It's really the altitude performance that doesn't do it any favors. Oh, there we go. Just shoot him right up. If we can find a light fighter over here. Got him. Oh, I see it. Maybe I can pull that guy off my buddy. There we go. Oof. A bit of a turning fight right now, but we managed to pick up the zone. And now let's see if we can help our team out at all over here. Uh, I saw the multi-roll. Always good to keep your friends safe if you can. Oh, well, looks like we picked up that garrison as well. There we go. We do get to carry two Tiny Tims. Unfortunately, this is what we get when we go to specialization. I prefer specialization. Before specialization, you get two 1,000 pound bombs that are actually fairly substantial. Um, and of course, I like bombs more than I like rockets. Not to say that the rockets can't do good stuff, but I see it. Managed to get him before he got us. Oh, not in the zone, not in the zone. Ah, we set ourselves back a little bit. We'll spawn back at the airfield. Uh, no, we'll spawn at the spawn. I'm going to see if I can counter a little bit. We do have a human in an IL-20, and it looks like he might be one of these two working his way over to that facility. The enemy has an NC-1070, and then a human TA-152. Now, unfortunately, we burned up our consumable for our engine repair, although it's... Not currently showing. 
the timer on there for whatever reason. Thought I saw a GA over here, but it looks like he left and the other bomber has been taken out. Batteries in the clouds. Trying to see if I can find him here. I thought I saw a bomber in this area, but could just be deceived. Let's head to the airfield. Air now we have air supremacy, so nice job, red jacket. Oh, I swear we just saw, saw a glimpse of him for just a second. All right, who do we got here? Of course, we get the squirrel, flying squirrel paint job. Looking for an intercept here. Little bit of a hitch. Another little hitch that caused us to miss our target there. Not quite sure what's causing those. There we go, got the Avenger against Peyton. Who else do we have here? He's done for, no. The thing that really sucks about the grind with this aircraft is that initially, you start out with like six really piddly 50 cal machine guns. And if you've ever flown a heavy with 50 cal machine guns, it is absolutely horrendous. Uh, it just doesn't have enough oomph and even when you upgrade to the next set of machine guns they're they're better but you really want to get your hands on these 20s and once you specialize the plane you can put on the bolt carriers or you can put on the gas operated action and roll for cooldown uh, and that way you can fire a little bit longer which is exactly what we did here now we tried to maximize for maneuverability on this platform because when you specialize it it opens up the airframe and the engine slots at least if memory serves correctly, so we can actually really double up on the maneuverability. And we even went with aerobatics and aerodynamics expert, and that got our turn time down to 12.7. So in a lot of ways, and I know I say this a lot, but it flies a little bit more like a multi-roll. Uh, 6,000 feet, it's going to be lower than any of the other tier 8 heavy fighters. They're going to be able to get up a bit higher or at least the 262 will be able to get up a little bit higher. And you have the maneuverability that's kind of on par with like a like what the Focke Wolf 190 had at tier seven. So there's the uh, 420 millimeter cannons, but if we were to check, can we even check the tech tree anymore? I'm not sure it'll even show me. Uh, no, it won't show me, oh well. Uh, trust me, it has two sets of 50 cal machine guns, six of them, and they definitely don't have the same type of damage output. You can even see the hash mark right here of where the firepower difference essentially was before we upgraded. But we're at nearly 700 damage a second, and the range goes out to 2,300, 2,400 feet, which is a decent range. And you guys saw the volume of fire that this thing was kicking out. It's quite substantial. 700 rounds a minute uh, just for a frame of reference let's pull out the f2h's cannons those are going to be oh come on come on 600 rounds a minute these are the same guns you get on the xf90 and the same guns you get on the pirate and the f7u corsair the same guns these these are tier 10 cannons but when you compare them to the xf5u it's an even higher volume of fire. So just so you're aware, that's why these guns actually overheat so quickly, but they're not actually getting super high damage numbers, but I'm more than happy with nearly 700. I do prefer the 2000 pounders. I used to call them my squirrel nuts, drop my acorns on a target and just proceed. Uh, but now we've got the tiny Tims on here. I keep taking them anyways. A lot of people like to fly it clean. It really is your choice. This is what I was talking about before. Just look at the way that this aircraft sits. I mean, it's not quite 45. I think it's more like 30 degrees, but you can see that it was able to probably get a ton of lift just from the propellers. And like I said here, it actually had a pitch mechanism in it and they're almost more like helicopter blades. Now this is what this aircraft would have looked like if it ever went into production theoretically. The one that they actually flew just had wooden propellers, which is the unupgraded version of this aircraft. 
and it did have this uh, this engine setup where it actually rerouted the power through a set of gears in order to power these propeller driven sections here and you can actually see that they uh, have them set up so they're counter rotating so that way there isn't going to be a torque effect so there's a really cool concept and neat design here that they made uh, but of course Again, this is just another symptom of the jet era killing a lot of the propeller development. Uh, they were really getting to a point where they were making propeller propeller driven aircraft and make some make them do some crazy things. But there was just that limitation of not being able to really break the sound barrier with propellers because you would obviously have some crazy aerodynamic effects that start to take place once you get past that transonic barrier. So they just kind of abandoned the concept but this would have been great for like a light strike kind of like mini carrier because then you wouldn't need the full runway setup and the steam catapults and yada yada but now yeah, it's a neat it's a neat concept a lot of people were, were actually reporting ufos when this thing was doing its test flights and some people speculate that that's where some of the uh, ideas of flying saucers actually came from was from these test flights uh, i might have come from other things but this definitely fed into it as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and our crazy squirrel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.